What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again here with another Cryptorhythm lesson. Today, we're going to be a genius by solving addition problems. All right, so let's take a look at our objective today. Our objective today, today we will learn how to solve addition Cryptorhythm puzzles by using problem solving strategies so that we stop breaking pencils in frustration. So let's get to work and start cracking these codes. All right. We are going to teach you a thought process to help you solve these. Now within this thought process, you're gonna to have to do a couple different things by yourself. This is higher level thinking, but we believe in you. We know that once you learn the process and start to apply it, you'll start to find these problems easier and easier and easier as you practice them. The first step we're gonna do, we're gonna look at the operation. Okay. Now today it's going to be all addition, but when you come to these cryptorhythm puzzles, you need to know am I adding, am I subtracting, am I multiplying, am I dividing? Because that's going to help you understand what you need to do for step number two, which is we want to look at the place values and see if we can make a quick generalization. All right. So can we eliminate possible answer choices based on regrouping or properties of that operation? I'm going to show you how to do this with an example. So I know this is a little wordy, but go ahead and stop, jot the notes, okay? Um, and then you'll be able to see how we use them for our I do problem. Step number three, after we do that, okay, after we've eliminated possible answer choices, we've kind of narrowed down our numbers, we're going to use an organized list for each letter. And these types of problems, each letter can only be a digit, right? And we only have so many digits. Right? We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So making an organized list is a great problem solving strategy for these types of puzzles. Step number four, we're going to plug in an option. Okay, So we, we might eventually get to a point where we have to guess and check. So we're going to plug that option in, see if it works. If not, we'll cross it off our organized list and keep trying. And then as always, step number five, figure it out, right? We got to figure it out. We got to just sit down. We got to have some perseverance. We got to have some problem solving strategies and we got to figure it out. So let's take a look at these steps in action. Now, the reason I love these steps is because so many times when we look at these problems or, or when we look at a Rubik's cube or when we look at a magic square, we think it's totally abstract and you have to kind of have all these mathematical geniuses. But here's the thing. Almost everything in life is a process that you can learn. So anybody can learn these processes. Some of you might get it after one problem. Some of you might need to do 10 problems, but everybody can get these. Okay. So step number one, I want to look at the operation. I know I'm adding. Okay. That tells me something about regrouping. Step number two. Okay. We're going to look at the place values and see if we can make a quick generalization. And I can make a quick generalization. Whenever, when I added a plus a plus a, I had to regroup to my tens place. Biggest possible digit I could use nine plus nine plus nine would have made this a 27, okay? Which means when I'm making my organized list, I know B can either be one or two, okay? Because I had to regroup to the tens place. And when the biggest digit I have is nine. So if I did nine plus nine plus nine, that would be 27, okay? If I did five plus five plus five, that would be 15 and I have to regroup a one. So B can only be one or two, all right? So I've already eliminated a lot of different options there, okay? Now that I've made a generalization about B and I've really narrowed my list, I can do the same thing for A. Looking at my place value, looking at my ones place, I see that when I added the same number three times, I had to regroup, which means this can't be zero. It can't be one. It can't be two because two plus two plus two would be six. Three plus three plus three would be nine. So A has to be at least four. And then it could really be any of these digits, okay? So now, be, just by doing steps one and step two and understanding regrouping and making quick generalizations, I've narrowed my list down tremendously, okay? So now I've made my organized list, and now I'm just going to plug in an option and see if it works. But before I do that, I know one other thing. I know that when I added A plus A plus A, it gave me a number that had to end in A. I had to regroup, so it's obviously a two-digit number, but I'm looking for a number that when you add it three different times, ends in that same digit, okay? So for instance, if I plug in four for this, four plus four plus four would be 12, okay? Well, if A is four, this A can't be two. So I know four does not work. Really, all I'm doing is quickly checking, again, using my generalization that I made. So let's try five. So if A is five, 
okay, five plus five plus five would equal 15, and then I had to regroup over here, which would make B one. So actually A can be five, and if A equals five, then B would have equaled one, okay? So I know A is five and B is one. Now, I'm gonna quickly check though, because some of these have multiple solutions. I'm gonna erase my work. Now, if I did six plus six plus six, that would be 18. Okay, well, that didn't end in a six from in my ones place, so it can't be six. Seven plus seven plus seven would be 21. That doesn't work. Eight plus eight plus eight would be 24. And that doesn't work. If this A is eight, this A can't be four. And then nine plus nine plus nine, obviously would be 27. So if A equals nine, this A can't be seven. So this actually has a unique solution. And my solution is, a equaled five and B equaled one. So uh, now you can self check. And I know we've already done this, but it's just good to self check. Five plus five plus five would be 15. And I can tell that this works. All my A's are five and my B is a one. That's really it. We just go through the same thought process each and every time. Now, this one was a little bit easier because I only had a ones place that I was adding. Let's take a look at practice number two, which has a few more place values. So here I have AB plus CB equals BBA. Okay, so I have three different num or letters I'm trying to figure out. Right, I'm gonna begin with the end in mind by writing them down right here so I know what I'm looking for. And now I'm going to look at the operation, okay, addition. I'm gonna know that that helps me understand regrouping and what I might need to do. I'm gonna look at the place values to see if we can make a quick generalization. And in fact, again, we can. We know A plus C meant you had to regroup. We're only adding two digits in the tens place. That's important because let's say for some reason both of these were nine. They're not because we know A and C can't be the same thing. The biggest digit that we have is nine. So if we add that twice, that would be 18. That means no matter what these numbers are, even if I had to regroup for my ones place and this became a 19, right? B can only be one because you had to regroup from when you added your tens place. So now I know that B equals one, right? I've already figured one out just by making a generalization. And because I know that already, right? If I make each of these a one, I know A has to be two. So I've already figured out B and A just by knowing about regrouping and making a generalization. At this point, because I know two out of three letters, I don't even need to make an organized list. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna plug in two for A and one for B, all right? I'm gonna leave a blank spot right here. I know this was also one. I know this had to be two. I know this has to be one. And I know this has to be one, right? So I just, for every B, I plugged in a one. And for every A, I plugged in a two. Now, we are looking for what C is, okay? Well, I know that when I added two to whatever C was, I got 11 because I have a one in my tens place and I had to regroup to put a one in my hundreds place. Well, what plus two equals 11? So C has to be nine for this one. I didn't even get down to using steps three or four, right? I just went straight from step two to step five, which is figure it out. And why was I able to do that? Because I looked at the operation, I realized I was adding, and I know about regrouping. I know when I add two digits, right? I know what has to regroup when you're adding, which eliminated all my possible answer choices except for one. And then because I had one plus one over here, I just plugged those in, I was able to figure out A. And from that point, it was pretty easy, right? I just set up my equation with my numbers and I figured out what I needed to add to two to make 11. That's the great thing about this thought process. If you do it and you do it every single time, some of these questions are gonna be very quick. And some of them, you might have to make that organized list and try a couple different numbers and see if they work and just keep persevering through it. But if you do the thought process every single time, it will help you. Thank you so much for checking this out. I hope this was helpful. I hope that thought process uh, will be something that you'll take and apply to doing these problems. Uh, check out our Cryptorhythm lesson on how to do subtraction problems. Again, we're gonna be using the same thought process. We appreciate you. Check out all our songs and lessons. We would love for you to subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment letting us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.